All right, peeps. Been a little bit, but uh, we're making great progress here. We're going to get this apron in today. And uh, you know on um, one of the previous videos I showed you that we had an issue that the apron wasn't long enough. So we fitted the apron in and everything. And I had two different aprons from two different manufacturers, same issue, not the car. So because I had two aprons, I was able to make it fit. And this is what you have to do sometimes with aftermarket parts. So what we did, we fitted the apron, and then we went ahead. This is how much we were short, right there. So we took the edge off of one, and we're going to do a butt weld onto this apron, and it's going to fit perfect. And I'm going to show you in a little bit how I do the butt weld. But right now, we just have the edge fitted. So I'm going to go and tack it up, and then I'll show you how to do a butt weld. Okay, guys, so um, we did a couple of quick tacks, and I got my new piece in here. And you can see it's tacked, and you can see the amount of space that this was off. And as I said before, it's not the car, because I took measurements before of the distance from the firewall to the shock tower and nothing changed. So it's definitely the part. Two different parts, two different manufacturers, but this is what you got to do. Look at that edge now. And we're also using a product, I don't know if you guys have ever used these before, they're called Clicos. And what that allows you to do, you use these fasteners once you get your alignment. You drill a little eighth inch hole, you pop these babies in. They have a special plier that goes with them that just, you know, one, two, three. So once we have the alignment, we use a couple of these. So as we're taking the panel on and off and so forth, let's just put it right back where we had it. And one other thing that you want to be really aware of when you're putting these aprons in in the back, what I did here was you got to be careful where the hinge goes. See these holes for the hinge? If you don't have the distance from here, from the back one, to this proper, it's not going to fit and give you the right adjustment. So it's key to fit the hinge on here to make sure that this is where it's got to go, this way. And we also took a measurement from this bolt over to this hole before we took this off so I knew what that measurement was and I also matched it to the other side of the car so this is definitely where the aprons gotta go alright I'm gonna show you now how to do a butt weld okay guys so when we're doing our butt weld do you see how tight I have the joint there that's key if you don't get it tight it's okay you can take a piece of copper behind the joint and that'll help fill it in. It won't let the wire pass through. And you need to do a little test sample on a piece of scrap metal. And this is not the thickest metal, so I've got my settings pretty much low. And, you know, they always tell you when you're doing these types of welds, don't go more than a quarter of an inch. And that's true, but here's a little tip for you. If you have a blower, hooked up to your air, what you do is, once you do your quarter inch, you cool down the area with the blower. So you just, and it allows you to keep going at a good pace. And you're never going to heat the metal up by using the blower and cooling it down. Okay, so I'm going to get busy here. I'm going to do a little bit and show you what it should look like. Okay, guys, so I did a little section here, and I just finished up welding it and another thing I forgot to mention to you is I always use a wire brush so you want to hold that Joey please so as we're going any type of runs that you get on there as you keep going it's going to be nice and clean to let me proceed and the way that you do this is you're going to I'm going to show you in a little bit but as you're doing your little tacks you want to let each tack Cool down a touch, but you still want it red when you hit the button to go to your next one, so that this way they all melt together. You don't just do one, stop, let it cool, do another, because then you don't get a continuous bead. So as you're going, you start it, 
Okay, it's going to be red, and you just let it cool down for a second. Then you hit your next one, your next one, your next one. And you just keep doing it that way when you're doing a butt weld like this. And this way you could see, they're all melted together. Nice. Okay, I'm right. Okay. Okay, guys. So, I'm going to show you how this technique works. So here we go. I got a little red. Bing. 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 Bing, bing, bing. And now Joey's going to hit it with the app. And now I'm going to hit it with the wire brush. Look how nice that looks. Nice, huh guys? There you go. There's your Gorilla Welding lesson for the day. Alright, we finished it up. Now here's the apron side. Okay, look how nice that looks. Great penetration. This is like almost perfectly even here. We're just going to have to run a little bit of 50 grit over this on a rotor lock disc. A little bit of 80. And that's it. Not even going to need any filler there. Came out really good. And now I've got what I need for my my section and this apron fits perfect alright man time to get this baby in